Hi, welcome to another episode of SASA Chat. Today we are going to be talking about um, the difference between light apparel and dark apparel printing process and some design tips. And to help me go over that, we have our friend Megan here, who is our apparel category manager. Hi! You may remember her when we launched leggings and tank tops, and today she's going to give us an overview of really what the difference is between the two, because it's kind of been a little secretive. Um, and so we want to make sure that we give you most information so you guys can have the best designs. So without further ado, um, we have a lot of apparel styles and techniques on Zazzle. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to our designers what they are? Yeah, so most retail quality um, printing is actually done by screen printing, but that comes with its limitations in terms of number of colors, uh, minimum orders, things like that. At Zazzle, we kind of let customers buy you know, units of one or orders of one. And with that, we leverage direct-to-garment printing. So you'll hear a lot of conversation about DTG printing on light colors versus dark colors. But really, um, it allows the consumer to buy one. There's no color limitations, and there's no real setup fee. So for direct-to-garment printing, just imagine taking a shirt and actually running it through kind of a huge um, inkjet printer, you know, um, and that's kind of the, the process. We also have um, what we call sublimation. So that's more for kind of polyester-based fabrications. Um, a lot of our active wear, for instance, is, is done via sublimation, which is um, actually transferring a design from a sheet of special paper to the physical garment itself. So between those two processes, those are the kind of bread and butter of what we do at Zazzle. And we do have other products like you mentioned, um, the leggings and um, all of our print tank tops, things like that, that are um, sublimated and then cut and sewn together. So yeah, we do have a lot of different styles. Today we are going to focus mainly on this DTG and sublimation. Um, which is the majority of our business, to be honest. And when you look in the Zazzle shirt tool, um, that is the majority of how those shirts were designed. Exactly. Cool. So um, you talked about DTG, so, and you talked about um, screen printing. So first of all, what are the pros and cons aside from the quantity that they offer? Um, so DTG kind of offers a full range of colors, right? So you're not going to be able to achieve a photograph on a shirt through screen printing. So that's kind of the other real benefit of the DTG process. And we do have screen printing on our site, um, but it's not, it's, it's a little dated, I would say. Yeah, so it's a, a design tool that we are looking to update, um, hopefully later this year, which is exciting. Yeah, so right now our tips are mostly for um, DTG, but when we do revamp the screen printing, we'll do another video and we can share with you some tips on designing for screen printing because um, while there are a lot of benefits and there are also limitations such as a setup cost and you know you have to really hit a certain volume point before it becomes more profitable. So today we're going to talk about DTG. So DTG, direct to garment, right? Mm -hmm. And within direct to garment, there's a light apparel and dark apparel. Yep. Um, I know in the product tool we wrote recently even broke it out. I think it used to be sort of confusing um, as to how it was printed, but now we actually, if you look at the style switcher, light apparel's on top and dark apparel's on bottom. And light apparel is a little cheaper than dark apparel, and Megan will explain to you why. Uh, there's that, but can you explain what what the two processes are? I think the easiest way to understand it is to imagine if you had a red crayon and you were going to start drawing on a piece of white paper. That red crayon would come across quite vivid, um, but if you took that same color and actually drew on a black uh, piece of paper, you would barely see your design. So that's sort of the, the same thing that we'll talk through on the, on the shirt line. Um, with light apparel, um, we actually don't print a base layer of white, so any kind of color of the shirt that you design on will kind of come through your design as well. So white will, will be great, will be vivid, but if you design on a heather or a light pink, some of those colors will show through your design. Um, and on the flip side, if you're talking about dark apparel, we actually print a layer of white ink 
underneath your design. So your design is really vivid on that black shirt. Um, so that's the primary difference, right? So light apparel, there's no white being printed in your design. And dark apparel, there will be white. Um, and with that addition, just with ink and kind of labor, et cetera, that's kind of why you see the cost of a dark apparel shirt be a bit higher than our light apparel. Cool. So visually, we can actually show this in practice. Right now, you're looking at Mickey Mouse on a white shirt. And the design itself is quite vivid, and you'll notice the subtle detail of his eyes are, are white, kind of what you expect. But if you switch this design to a light blue shirt, you'll notice that the whole design now has sort of a light blue hue to it. Um, and then lastly, if you shift to a dark apparel color, one of these darker, kind of dark royal blues, you'll notice that the white in the design will now um, surface. So his eyes are white, and the entire image is actually much more vivid in this case. So let's look at it side by side again. You can see in the light apparel, it's more muted. In the dark apparel, it's a little more vivid. Cool. So why don't we show you some, now that you've seen it on screen, why don't we show you some examples um, in person? So pop quiz. Is this light apparel or dark apparel, Megan? It's light apparel. So in this instance, you can kind of see the heather uh, texture coming through the design. And you'll notice kind of key elements here. The, the teeth are not white and the socks aren't white. So that's kind of a, a, an easy way to understand if this is light or dark apparel. Cool. Next quiz question. Light or dark apparel? Dark apparel. So again, this is actually on a, a, a pink tie-dye shirt, but you're not seeing that pink tie-dye kind of come through the design here. So underneath the sphinx is actually a layer of, of white. Um, to really make sure the design is, is vivid and bright in this case. Cool. Well, you aced the quiz. So now that you aced the quiz, why don't we jump on to some design tips for our designers. So, first of all, um, really important, just remember we don't print white on a white shirt. So white uh, won't print on light colors, but black will print on dark colors. So oftentimes, with a light apparel shirt, you put a white background to kind of hide anything. You cannot do that on dark apparel because um, on a white shirt, we will crop that out automatically for you. Whereas in a dark shirt, if you put a black box and then put something over it, that black box will actually print. So the first first rule is white will, will not print, black will print. So remember that when you're trying to design on the background. Um, second of all, when you're in the checkout process, there are tips under post for sale. And you'll notice there's these options. It says light apparel only, dark apparel only, even certain ones that say this style only. Um, we did this so that you guys can really help preserve the integrity of your design. So if you have something that you do absolutely want the light that looks better on dark apparel, you can make sure that it's organized so that customers cannot style switch to another style that isn't dark apparel. So sometimes, uh, obviously it's up to you, but that way you can really help preserve the integrity of your design. Um, next. Look at the style that you publish on. So certain styles, depending on the fabric. So our burnout t-shirts are really soft in material, so they absorb some of the color. So any color on those um, are gonna appear a little lighter than say a really dark, or not dark, a really rough fabric. And that so, kind of goes well for that vintage kind of look with the, the burnout fabrication as well. So this tank top. So this is a really soft, the Bella canvas, the muscle tank, and it's a really, really comfortable material, and this is a very popular style, but you'll notice that the colors do seem a little more faded than potentially like a really like crisp, saturated. Yeah. saturated. So I'm gonna look at these two. Um, try not to cover. <laughs> um, but like this, this is a different material, than this, and hence the colors show up differently. So again, in the stock skew filtering, you can limit which ones you want to show. And a good tip um, to really understand what style we're really talking about is, if you notice a style is 
mostly made of cotton, then the design will come to be more vivid, more saturated. If it's if it's less cotton based, as that tank top is, that's a polyviscose, it'll be a little bit um, lighter in the hue. And then uh, the product copy, uh, we do list out kind of exactly what the material of each one is. So if you're really into cotton, you can check that out. Um, next, so we're just going to show a couple more. So this, again, this little heather gray shirt is a uh, quiz. Is it light or dark apparel? This one is light apparel because, again, the two, like the latter, they all don't print any white. So this is a light apparel shirt. Whereas contrast, this is dark apparel because it's, it's a trick question, because, but it does print white. So anything that prints white is a dark apparel print process. So it really depends on the fabric. And it's, does, it's not based on your design, it's based on the style of the shirt. Here is a really cute flower girl um, shirt. If you notice the pink, uh, it's really pretty in the flower there, but the pink actually doesn't, the pink of the shirt uh, kind of blends in with the flower. So if that's the design you wanted to go for, that's one thing, but you know, it would, this pink shirt would look slightly different on a white shirt versus what other colors do we have on this? A light green. A light green. Mm -hmm. So just, just know that, you know, if you, Maybe this is something you want to let the customer choose, but there is going to be that difference because of the base material. And lastly, we're going to show you some dark apparel. So this is the red shirt. This is the dark apparel print process because they're just white and it really pops off the, the shirt. And then, um, I love tie-dye. <laughs> but this tie-dye, again, is a dark apparel print process. It's, it's got a base layer, so that really helps pop. Um, so to kind of help round out some uh, other design tips on this, um, try to expand the full design area of your shirt. So um, if you notice on our pages, our models are pretty slim, so they're usually wearing small or petite sizes, and if customers order large or XL, the ratio is about the same, so you really want to make sure you get as much design coverage as you can for your design. So when they get the large or extra large shirts, it's not like a small design on a huge shirt. So those are some tips from our designers. Um, and if you have layering effects, make sure you lock your layers um, so that um, if customers, customers move certain things around, they're not gonna move your layers around as well. Um, light colors on the gray, especially the heathers, they, those will show through. So make sure you take a look at the design um, because again, the heather is, some heathers are more heathered than other heathers. Um, for example, the tank, there's one tank top which is, the heathers is more obvious than other yeah, heathers. It has a stronger contrast. So it's, I think it's a white marble. Yeah. Um, so you'll see some of that line, some of that um, texture come through in your design. So just make sure you look at the material of the shirt as well as the style. And uh, lastly, um, playing with the filters and contrast. If you go into the design tool, if you after you add an image, there's actually little filters and contrast. Those can really help um, give you some leeway on certain designs. So play with that. It's almost like an Instagram filter that you can put on your shirt. Cool. Well, we hope you learned a lot from this session. And until next time. Mm -hmm.